Hello and welcome to the Poor Hammer Podcast, episode 73. I'm your host, Brad. This is your professor for the week, Dr. Eric. Yeah, without a doctorate, but how's it going? You're a nuclear physicist. It's fine. <laughs> Same thing. It's more concerning that nuclear physicists don't require a doctorate degree. We're not curing anybody. Some would say we do the exact opposite a decent amount of times. I also got tickets to see Oppenheimer. <laughs> <laughs> And on this episode, we're going to be covering math. But don't turn the episode off just yet. We're going to make it fun, I promise. Yeah, and uh, for all of you British listeners, these are maths time. Yes, we're doing quick maths for our (laughs) British audience. But without any further ado, let's jump into this. Sounds good. So I guess to start things off with something interesting to keep your attention, let's talk about the tool we're going to use for this episode. Yeah, there's a pretty cool website, Unit Crunch, and actually quite a powerful option to show you different loadouts and what to expect. Also has pretty graphs and charts, which is always good. Yeah, and we're going to use it to show off a bunch of basic math hammer. But before we kind of get all the way into it, quick word of caution. Statistics is fun, but it's always going to lie to you. There's so many ways to look at statistics that math says is right and get the wrong expectation out of it. It's okay. Just don't put money down on it because it'll lie to you. I would say the number one mistake people make when they look at a chart for like expected damage output or something is as humans, you go, where's the 50% mark? That's the average. And then you go, cool, five damage is the average. I will do five damage. You're not going to do five damage every time. Sometimes you may do zero and you can't go, but the math said I would do five. Right. And there's a lot of times that that happens. I mean, it comes up very commonly in a game XCOM where it's like you have a 96% chance to hit them and you miss. And it's like, oh, my God, the game's rigged. It's like, well, no, you still had a 4% chance to miss. And it just happened to hit that. So, you know statistics. All right, with that out of the way, let's go through a couple very basics. These are things that everyone should be aware of when they go into math in a D6 system. Ones are bad, sixes are good. Sure, but let's say a D6. If you roll a D6, the average is 3.5, which is obviously not a face on a D6, but it means on average you either are going to roll a three or a four. It actually works out a little bit better if you roll two dice, then you kind of get rid of the half of a integer kind of thing. Yeah, so when you roll two dice, the average is seven, but because of how 2D6 works, seven is also the most common number you roll. Yep. This is where you start getting into bell curves, where you look at a curve and you go, it is far more likely to hit the middle of this curve than any other point on it and luckily most things when it comes to rolling dice are normal nice looking curves they look like bells yes and dice in general when you're trying to figure something out in a d6 system whenever you're moving up or down one number you're essentially moving statistically 16.6 repeating 16.7 percent for a much quicker version of that you can basically add 16 percent or 17 percent to your current chance of doing something and you should be pretty close so let's say you had a 50 percent chance to hit because four five or six hit you've got a 50 percent chance we move it so that four valid numbers work so three four four, five, or six, you now go up 16.7% chance to 66.7%. Yeah, it's one of those that I think a lot of people are able to intuitively understand 16 or 17% versus one-sixth. We generally deal with percentages more often in normal day-to-day life than one-sixths. Yeah, well, it's a lot easier when you get to, you know, like a four-up save. It's a 50-50. I understand a coin flip in my head. A three-up ballistic skill, two out of three shots land. I can understand that if I've got, you know, nine shots in this unit, I can expect approximately six of them will hit when I'm ballistic skills three. Yeah, and these are all just kind of tricks to estimate quick what to expect and a lot of times these are things that you'll just kind of intuitively gain when you just play more and more one thing you'll get used to in my opinion is looking at a combat and realizing you're going to do far less damage than you may first think you're going to do when you initially look at it and you're like i'm gonna pick up a whole bunch of dice and then you're like oh right but i have to hit and then i have to wound and then they've got saves and it's like okay (laughs) maybe this isn't 
just a stomp fest. And I guess one last thing is the idea of re-rolling. This one is easiest to comprehend at like having a four up to hit, but re-rolling everything. You can visualize it as a coin flip. And if you get a tails, you can flip it again. So you end up with a 75% chance to hit instead of a 50% chance. All right. So those are kind of like some quick ideas to keep in mind. But one of the nice things that 10th edition has done for us is they've tried to unify a lot of things and so they've given us keywords we have a weapon profile that is a normal profile and then it has an ability attached to it and a lot of them change the math expectations yeah so the first one would be like lethal hits which means a critical hit which is a six naturally and can be modified will automatically wound the target so you skip entirely having to check for the wound roll which can be very good especially on tougher targets where you have a smaller chance of wounding getting to skip over that step becomes infinitely more powerful the tougher your target becomes in a similar style sustained hits is if you get a critical hit you get x additional hits but it's kind of the opposite because you're not automatically wounding on those you still have to get the wounds you're just if you are already a good chance of getting wounds you have more of them so you want to have higher strength versus your lower toughness type thing and then you get more out of it and then devastating wounds is critical wounds again a six naturally will cause mortal wounds instead of your opponent having to do a save roll, which means for low AP weapons, this is incredibly strong, or against very tanky things, like if they've got a two-up save naturally, getting to skip having to wound them and just making them take the mortals is a huge damage bonus. So another one is Twin Linked, which allows you to re-roll all wounds. And I mean, we kind of talked about what that's like in the re-rolls, but it's obviously quite nice when you're not expected to get the wound. It gives you another chance at it kind of thing. And the last of these global ones would be Torrent, which is automatically hit. It's usually combined with like a random amount of attacks in the first place. So you get a random amount of hits. And again, skipping a hit roll is one more roll you don't have to make which is always great when you're trying to get some reliable statistic at the end. Yeah, that is one of the things with Torrent is it helps you have more reliability and less randomness which means you can plan for it better. You don't have as much of the, I got the small slice of the pie as opposed to what I expected, which was the large slice. And it's always nice. And as a bonus, it sounds weird to say, but it is better when you have a worse chance to hit. This doesn't tend to come into play much other than Overwatch, where everyone is stuck at a six to hit. Torrent becomes incredibly powerful in Overwatch, which again is quite thematic of, you know, using the flamers to stop the guys charging you. It is kind of a thing in uh, 40k but there's also a bunch of more situational keywords yeah keywords that don't do anything in certain scenarios but if something happens they do something yeah so an example would be heavy is you add one to the hit roll if you didn't move blast adds an extra shot to your shot count for every five models in the enemy unit there's also the entire anti something x and anytime you got a wound roll of X or higher, it automatically gets a critical against that thing. Which again, with like devastating wounds is an incredible combo because then devastating wounds triggers at a lower number. So you can have something like haywire attacks, which have anti-vehicle and devastating wounds to mortals to vehicles on a reliable roll. And then the last of these is Melta, which gives you bonus damage if you're within half range, and Rapid Fire, which gives you extra shots in half range. Both of those, you can understand when you're in half range, you get a bonus. Those are pretty nice and easy. There's a few others that do matter, but they're much more binary. They're kind of an on or off. A functionality keyword rather than one that changes the math behind the weapon. Right. It just lets you do the thing. Like assault lets you shoot if you advanced. Pistol lets you shoot if you're in engagement. Otherwise, you wouldn't. So you would have zero for your chance. <laughs> and these won't come up when we show math like later on for your expected damage output. But like if you're in engagement range, it would have been zero. But you have a pistol, so you get the number instead. 
Right. Precision would be another one where technically a weapon having precision doesn't change anything about it, but it means you can target leaders directly. Yeah, so there's a lot more nuance to the game than just, hey, look at some math. But it is nice to be able to look at these modifiers and see some type of expectations on if it's good in comparison to something else. Yeah, so without any further ado, let's get into some fun examples to help get these into our heads so that we can remember them later. Special thanks once again to Dix Hewitt for his amazing website, Unit Crunch. I have spent countless lunch hours using this, so I have some familiarity with it. Hopefully we can use it to our advantage today. Yeah, so let's start off with a few smaller things. Let's work our way up to the uh, more big, fancy weapons. Okay, let's do Termagants, which I have saved, which I guess is an introduction to Unit Crunch. You make profiles for attackers or defenders or both. Once the profile is created, you can then use it and then do statistics on it and do modifiers to it so you can see what would happen if you have to take a minus one to hit or things like that or buff it using one of your stratagems. And it can show you how that changes is the outcome of your attacks. This is a really good learning tool and a fun way to waste half an hour on occasion. But let's start things off with some Termagants, and let's fire at some Space Marines. This is 10th edition, so sounds right. <laughs> so I've got three different weapons here that the Termagants can equip. You've got Flesh Borers, where it has one attack. They always hit on fours for all three of these weapons. They've got a Strength of 5, an AP of 0, and a Damage of 1. That means they hit Marines on 4, they wound them on 3, the Marines get a 3-up save, and you only deal 1 damage, and you only get 1 shot per gun. It's not embarrassing, but... Uh... But it's nothing crazy either, yeah. Then we've got Spine Fist, which actually have two functional keywords, which are Assault and Pistol, meaning you can advance and still shoot them, and you're able to shoot them even in combat. They pay for this by being only a 12-inch range, which is much shorter than the 18 inches the Flesh Borers and the Devourers get, but you get two attacks out of every Termagant using the Spine Fist. They still hit on fours. They only have Strength 3, meaning they'll wound Marines on fives, and Marines still get a 3-up save because it's got zero. AP and it still only does one damage, but it has a key ability on it called Twin Linked, which is going to change a bunch of math in a minute because it means you wound Marines on fives, but you can reroll everything, so you actually wound better than you think you do. Yeah, again, it's one of those, if your strength versus their toughness is not good, Twin Link helps quite a bit. Gives you a second chance at it. Then we've got the last option, which is the Devourer. The Devourer has an 18-inch range. It doesn't have any keywords. You get to fire two attacks for everyone with a Devourer. They've still got the Ballistic Skill of 4. They've got a Strength of 4, meaning they wound Marines on 4s, an AP of 0, and a Damage of 1. So if we load them up into Unit Crunch and we put them against 5 Space Marines, we can see what is expected to happen if you used each of the weapons. So Flesh Borers fire 10 times. You hit statistically 5 out of 10 because it's a 50% chance to hit on a Ballistic Skill 4. Three of those tend to wound because again you've got a 3 up to wound. And then Space Marines unfortunately are saving on 3s against those meaning only about one of them will actually go unsaved to deal damage. So if you fire 10 Termagants Flesh Borers into some Marines you take off one wound naturally without any extra bonuses. Sounds right actually yeah. (laughs) It's not ideal. No, no, it's not. Now, before we start getting into buffs, we'll continue with the other two. Spine Fist and Devourers both fire 20 shots. They both hit 10 times because they've got the exact same ballistic skill. And here's the fun part. Spine Fist, wound on fives, but reroll everything. Math-wise, this is essentially identical to wounding on fours which is what the Devourer does. So they both get five wounds out of it, which works out to approximately two-ish wounds that actually go through the Space Marine save, and you end up killing one Marine if you use Spine Fists or Devourers. That's uh, a bit better, yeah. (laughs) And, I mean, like you said, the Spine Fist also had some extra utility options to it with just the downside of being a lower range. So, you know, there's always positives and negatives there. Yeah, it's harder to recommend the Flesh Borer, and it's going to get harder when we start playing around with extra bonuses. But the Spine Fist and the Devourers are pretty 50-50, in my opinion, on which one I would want to take. Because extra range is nice, especially if you're trying to hold, like, mid or back points with Termagants. But Spine Fists are nice because of the whole Assault and Pistol keywords on them, which give you a lot of quality of life in exchange for 6 inches of range. So let's add some keywords and we can see how everything changes. Yeah. I think that uh, it's a good idea to show the cascading effects. 
So luckily, Space Marines, being infantry, could get the Swarming Instincts hyper adaptation used against them if you chose that, which is when a tiered in model with this hyper adaptation makes an attack that targets an enemy infantry or swarm unit, that attack has sustained hits one. So every critical gets an additional attack. So I can go down for global modifiers and we can see what happens if we were to use this hyper adaptation. We give ourselves sustained hit one. Now the flesh borers hit seven times instead of five. The spine fists and devourers hit 13 times each. Realistically, by the time you cascade those through wounding and then saving rolls, you end up with the exact same amount of damage dealt, which is a little bit awkward. So, let's go for a different buff. We'll remove this one, and let's say we're next to a Turvagon instead. So the Turvagon gives us lethal hits. That means our sixes will automatically wound, and wow, now we're getting four wounds with the Flesh Boar, and we're getting seven with Spine Fists and Devourers. Unfortunately, once you get through saving rolls, it statistically doesn't really matter. But, what if we did both? Hey, there you go. Now we see we get those seven hits with the Flesh Borer because of the exploding hits. The Spine Fist and Devourer still get 13. And some of those automatically wound in addition, which upped our wound count. And nothing happened to the Flesh Borer's final damage. However, the Devourer and the Spine Fist each end up dealing an average of three wounds instead of two. So you get one and a half marines if you have both buffs. But that is 50% more damage than you were doing originally, so wow. Yes, wow indeed. Not sure the uh, return on investment on that one. And to be fair, the return on investment's not that bad either, because one of these is just your detachment rule, which is matchup dependent, and the other one is a Turvagon who does an aura, so you could be affecting, you know, 80 Turmagons with that Turvagon's aura, and we're only looking at 10 of them. Right, and we're looking at the median, so there's a bit more that you can expand through in, you know, following through the grass in the charts below, or looking at the mean to see if, okay, maybe I'm a little bit higher on the chance kind of thing. Yeah, so median is your most likely 50% outcome, which for the flesh bore is flat one, which is why we didn't see any change even when we got better. If we go to mean, technically we went from one damage to 1.7 damage. So we're almost a two damage on average, but we're not there yet, so it doesn't round up to two on the median. Right. And since we're trying to look at quick expectations, it's a good idea to look at the median as its initial idea. But keep in mind that there is a bit more that you can drill down into. Yeah, and to bring this up, if you were to look at the graphs below, the median tells you the exact middle point of your data that you'll hit most likely. But if you were to look at the actual curves, the flesh bore has a less reliable curve than the other two because it has less attacks in total to even out the odds. Yeah, so go with like the more attacks you have, the more reliable the bell curve. Yeah, you're less likely to hit an extreme number. Yeah. And again, if you look below on the graphs, you'll see that the more chances you have, the more regular the curve will be and the less chance for an extreme result. So like there's an 18% chance you do zero damage with flesh borers and only a 5% chance or a 6% chance with the other two weapons. Yeah, so it's not just... Oh, let's look at what the end result is. Sometimes it's a good idea to look at where are the weaknesses of this profile. And not only is the flesh borer doing less damage, but it also has a substantially higher chance of doing nothing. Yeah, unbuffed, three out of every ten times you do this, you get no damage on space marines using flesh borers. And this will continue to come up. It's more and more important when you're looking at the high damage, low fire count weapons that if you miss, you only had the one shot, so that's zero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and when we get to things like a LAS cannon, you can feel that real bad when you see how high your chance to not do anything is. Right. All right, so let's get into another profile. Terminagants were great for, like, explaining all of the basics of this, but they're not very fun. Let's get some fun in here. Okay, okay. 
Let's throw some immortals in here and let's just shoot at some more marines because they're just good targets. Okay. I kind of was with you on the uh, let's celebrate 10th with the space marine versus the tyranid, but. Uh... All right. We won't go with a basic marine. How about Thunderwolf cavalry? I'm not sure that changes much in the expectation there. All right. Let's let's fight Wolfen then. Really? Bjorn? Yes, Brad. Let's do Bjorn. That's so much different. I like to shoot at Space Wolves, okay? Yeah, it seems like it. We won't do Space Wolves. Let's do uh, Black Templars and Pulsar. Okay. I mean, you do hate Space Marines, so why not? Let's shoot a Special Impulsor. <laughs> On second thought, let's just stick to the Space Marines. <laughs> okay. Just generic Space Marine? That's a good starting point. Yeah, let's, let's keep it basic. So, the matchup. To end all matchups... Immortals versus Space Marines. So we can do Tesla or Goss. Technically, Goss is probably better, but I'm ignoring that because Tesla is cooler. So let's look at Tesla Immortals. Okay. Unbuffed, Immortals shoot 20 shots, hit on threes, and every six double explodes because it's got sustained hits too. Math wise, this means every attack you make, you should get one hit out of. Because for every one you miss, you have a 50% of chance of that of getting two hits extra. That's cool as a starting point, but let's get a little weird with it. We've got a Plasmancer as one of our options for a leader. Just having a leader in our default index gives us plus one to hit, so we can add that to the profile. And then Plasmancer has a fun thing where critical hits happen on fives, not sixes. As we talked about before, it's not that something happens on a six, it's that it happens on a critical. Right, which means you can modify what criticals are and it helps out just that much more. So by adding both of these buffs, on average, when you fire 20 Tesla Carbine shots, 30 of those 20 hit. That sounds right, yeah. Necron technology, I ain't gotta explain shit. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I mean, it's Tesla, it's zappy zappy. And approximately 20 of them wound, because we're targeting generic space marines here. As Eric can attest from last week's game, sometimes 24 of them wound. Sometimes. Yeah, that was uh, an unexpected little kink in my plan. Pretty sweet way to lose <laughs> almost five marines in one go. It was only four. Got lucky. <laughs> but uh so just from having a leader in our index attachment you end up adding 3.4 hits which again is awfully close to that 16.7 percent we talked about plus one giving you right and obviously it's easy to look at these numbers and go like yeah right 16 percent but uh when you're actually at the table it's pretty easy to do 15 percent of something and then just go oh, a little bit more kind of thing so adding the extra three point whatever to the uh, chance of hits sounds about right is what you would expect yeah you wound 20 times out of 20 attacks when you do this trick which is pretty hysterical and then because we're saving on like a three up here and we've got no ap without spending cp on it or anything only seven of those wounds actually go through which is still a fair amount of dead marines this is actually even higher because immortals reroll ones to wound and if you're standing on objectives, they reroll all wounds. So like if we go for a best case scenario here, if you're standing on a point and we reroll all our wounds, you end up with 27 wounds on average from 20 attacks. It's not too bad. You average nine wounds going through those saves, even without giving them an AP from a strat or some other buff or whatever. Yeah, it's not too bad at all. Okay, so we've hit the poor Space Marines quite a bit. Let's move on to a little bit of a tougher target. Okay, let's fight a vehicle. Let's try to blow up a Lehman Russ. I thought you were going to say like an Impulsor or something like that, and I was going to be like, no, we're not <laughs> doing that. <laughs> a Lehman Russ. Sounds good. Let's have some custodians beat on it. All right. So shooting-wise, we're not that interested. It's not going to do anything. Their shooting is not very good for this. But in melee, whole boy. So without counting extra rules into this like katas or anything, you're already with four basic custodians taking six damage off of the Lehman Russ, which is almost half of it. It's not bad. But we can do better. And I'm just assuming you've got four random custodians with spears, the minimum squad loadout, whatever. 
yeah, it makes sense. They're uh, two up to hit. They've got decent strength and damage and AP. So yeah. The strength is actually very important to point out. These spears are S7. Strength 7 is a super important number in 10th edition. The reason is a lot of vehicles are either T10, T11, T12. Okay. Some of them are T9, but we'll focus on the 10, 11, 12. Tyranid monsters, guard vehicles, war dogs, armagers, all of those fall in that spectrum. A lot of the things that you're looking at as like tank equivalents that are expected to be kind of tough are in that general range. So let's say we're targeting something like T12, like a knight. If you were strength 6, 12 is W, meaning you only wound on 6s. If you're strength 7, 12 is now only better than you, but not double, so you wound it on 5s. It's twice as good. It is twice as good. It is a 16.7% better damage on the whole spectrum. And yes, it's twice the amount of successful wounds than you would have gotten had you had strength six. Right. And it's substantially better to have two outcomes that are good instead of just one. But strength six lets you do it to things that are T10 and T11. And strength seven lets you do it to things that are T12 and T13, which is essentially the entire game. It's kind of the high end cap that you need to actually worry about. There's always going to be these cutoff points that matter more. Those are the important ones. Yeah. And it's a lot easier to upgrade from, you know, a strength five to a strength six or a strength six to a strength seven than it is to upgrade randomly into strength 12 so that you can wound on fours it's usually easier to get a mass way to wound on fives than you know a few shots to wound on fours right but back to the math in general for this half of a lehman russ isn't too bad but again we haven't even factored in having katas yet yeah i think custodies have a couple buffs that they have options for one or two in the codex yeah I've heard something like that. So we're not going to get crazy with like character combos or anything. Let's just add the basics and see how good we are. Okay. So Kataz allow us to either choose a defensive one or we can add sustained hit one or lethal hits. Just to visualize the difference here where we know lethal hits math wise should be better because we're trying to wound something that's harder to wound. Let's add each one and see what it does. Right. Sustained hits one, we go from like the 5.6 as your true midpoint to 6.6 as your midpoint. It's not nothing. It's obviously better, but it's not something I would really go out of my way to bank on. Whereas if we take lethal hits, we jump up to 7.8 immediately, which is a much more substantial boost. Yeah, and it makes sense. It's one of those kind of intuitive things of it's more difficult to get the wound, so... So skipping wounding is better. And this does show that off pretty nicely. And let's say we really want this thing dead. Let's pay a CP for Slayer of Nightmares here, which adds one to our wound roll. And suddenly we're up to 10 damage dealt. Not quite dead yet, but uh, very possible. And this is a min loadout basic custody squad with no external buffs, just them walking around with their army roll and using a CP. Right. And if you go to the damage dealt graph, you could see like what the chance of actually killing it would be. Yeah, and it's still 20% chance. So one out of five attempts of doing this, you just get to kill the Lehman Rust from full wounds. Yeah, and it's obviously not the expected outcome. We're more at 10-ish or so. But as you can see, the graph is a more reliable kind of graph, as you would expect nice randomness to give you. So there is a decent chance of actually killing it. All right, I think we've hit most of the basics. Let's have some fun with some wombo combos. All right, yeah, I mean, this custody stuff, we started seeing some glimpses of the more options you can put on things, the more interesting it can be, but let's push it. All right, so we've got some Terminators. They're pretty popular. You're back to the spacemen, but I accept that. A Terminator is a nice target to try and figure out. So against some Terminators, let's take some G Gene Stealer cults and rise up against our oppressors. So we've got 10 of them with some hand flamers, which is torrent, meaning we automatically hit, but we are strength three against toughness five, so we only wound on fives. It works out to like an average of 35 attacks because again, 3.5 times 10, 35, math checks out. They all automatically hit, but then we lose a bunch when we go to wounds, which means we only get 12 wounds through for a total of then the Terminator saving on twos against them and getting like two-ish wounds dealt basically nothing 
Yeah. So, not ideal. No, not really. But let's let's combo a little bit. So, the hybrids could hop out of a truck, and the truck uses its ability, the fire support ability, which means it shoots the Terminators and gives the hybrids full wound rerolls for the rest of the phase, or twin-linked if you want the keyword for that. That's always good when your strength is low compared to the toughness, yeah. And we can have an Achilles Ridge Runner shoot at it too, which gives us an AP. Alright, so they don't basically auto-save out all the time. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so then we're tripling our damage output and averaging more like two dead terminators out of these little hybrids plus all the damage by the vehicles but we're not getting into that fair enough so we've tripled our damage output just by utilizing combos in our army list right like none of that is specific list building it's just like yeah these work out well together so do it yeah i'm going to put my dudes with flamers into the transport yeah and then they're gonna get out of the transport and blow something up <laughs> I'm going to fire my support unit at the tanky thing so that I get more AP against it. Yeah, it all works out well, but it does show that, like, these buffs can go from, like, do nothing to that's actually kind of a problem. And this is without even, like, getting into leaders or spending CP, of which you can do a lot of dirty stuff when we get into Gene Sealer cult combos. There's some really cool ones to buff up things like hand flamers. Yeah, it's really fun to think up combos like this when you're looking at your index and then math them out and see, is it like actually doing much for me? Run it against some different units and see what it actually does. And in this case, yeah, it does a lot for you. We literally tripled our damage output against a pretty juicy target to be shooting at. And it was not pretty to start with, so it's really nice to end up with two dead Terminators for our hybrids to get just in shooting. Yeah, and in this, we've kind of talked about this a bit previously, so I don't want to go into too far because it is kind of off topic. But when you're doing these things, each of your units have expected goals that they're trying to do. You're not going to throw these hybrids at a knight because that's not their intended targets. But let's say we did. What happens? That's the fun of unit crunch. You're right. And these are the types of things that like you can try and figure out where the units can actually thrive and where they're going to have more difficulties in actually accomplishing the goals that you put them in the army for. Honestly, I expected worse than this. It still is an average of five damage. Yeah, I mean, all that put together is solid for what hybrids are. It was not their intended purpose. (laughs) No, but it does show that, I guess, if you're up against the knight, it's not just a waste of time to roll the die. (laughs) Although, if we didn't have the combo, it's two, so that might be a waste of time to roll that many dice. But it would be a fun amount of dice to roll, so screw it. It's true. And, I mean, at a certain point, like... We're here to roll the dice. Yeah, it is one of those that the math expectations can kind of help you figure out what your units are going to be good at and try and actually make it so that your battle plan as it uh, evolves goes to your unit's strengths not their weaknesses all right before we get out of here let's do one last one just to humor me oh this is gonna be the uh nonsense thousand suns thing that you were talking about earlier isn't it yes okay this is one i have no idea on i am fascinated to see what you're going to do with it okay this will be easier if we don't target an infantry because then i have to explain more things (laughs) okay fair enough so we're gonna get vengeance for prospero and we're going to delete some thunderwolf cavalry okay So if we take 10 kitted out Scarab Occult Terminators, we're doing an average of like 8 damage to Thunderwolf Cavalry. That's okay. It's not great. It's okay. But we can buff them. Ah, good. I see this kitted out, and I was like, if this is the thing that you were talking about, I'm disappointed. You should try and choose a different defender to show it off. No, the (laughs) kitted out means they have their missile racks, and they have their Soul Reaper cannon, and I can give them their melee profiles. It's my standard what I have for 10 Scarab Occult Terminators when I use a brick. Fair enough. I was like, yeah, that seems not bad, Brad, but uh, (laughs) maybe we should... uh, lower our expectations when we're trying to sell this one. No, this gets slightly complicated and gives me two seconds to rant. Warp Smite is a pistol. You cannot fire a pistol and a non-pistol. So I have to choose between firing my bolter or firing my psychic ability. And I hate that. 
Welcome to 10th. And that's why we're going as Thunderwolf Cavalry, so I don't have to change my math here and make it so I'm using my Warp Smite, because it would be very good versus infantry. Right, because 4-up any infantry devastating wounds, yeah, that seems fine. Yeah, especially when we start buffing. All right, so let's begin the buffs. We haven't really done devastating wounds yet, so I guess let's choose Wrath of the Immaterium for our kindred sorcery. This means that all of our psychic weapons will have devastating wounds. Hint, I'm going to be giving everything psychic, so we don't have to worry about that. We can just universally apply devastating wounds. Okay, devastating wounds, good. It's a nice start. So let's spend a CP on Enscrolled Infusion. Which is obviously... Reroll a hit. Until end of phase, all Infernal Bolt Pistols, Infernal Bolt Guns, Infernal Combi Boltas, and Infernal Combi Weapons equipped by models in this unit have the Psychic ability and a Strength of 5. Alright, so Psychic, so this is how we're making that work, but actually a Strength in addition. We can also spend a CP on Devastating Sorcery to give us full rerolls on hits and wound rolls with all of our psychic attacks. That's always good. We'll also be in half range because we're rapid fire two weapons, so that's an extra bunch of shots. We'll have Magnus nearby, so we'll be able to have plus one to hit and wound roll with all of our psychic attacks. And we can be led by a Thousand Suns Sorcerer in Terminator armor to give us lethal hits on everything in the squad. All right, so that's uh, quite a few buffs. Let me look here real quick. We've got uh, plus one to hit, plus one to wound, twin length, you're re-rolling, rapid fire two in addition to it all. Okay. Yeah, so everyone's shooting four shots because we're within half range. Yeah. And devastating wounds and lethal hits, which while it's always an unfun nombo, they are mathematically better to have both than just one of the two. Yeah, it is one of those things with devastating wounds and lethal hits on... I wish there was a cleaner way that they interacted together, but it's fine. Yeah, so this brings us from, what, 8 damage originally to a very humble 21 damage going through. We will avenge Prospero. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I think that does its job pretty well. There's a few things that are like, let's line everything up into magical Christmas land, but not unreasonable for it to all be put together. It's less insane than you would think just because you can deep strike them. So as long as you have a target that you like within 12 inches of your deep strike and Magnus is nearby, that's all you need for this combo. The rest is just spending resources. It's not probably the most efficient way to play your Thousand Suns list, but I'm going to be doing it semi-regularly because it's hilarious. Yeah, I'm glad to have been part of this uh, explanation because I expect to see it happen to me. And honestly, against a knight, I still take 18 wounds off it with this combo. It's not the ideal choice here, but we'll take it. What's it look like against Terminators? You know, just a random... Not, not because I'm worried or anything. <laughs> yeah, 20. As long as you squat up in 10, some of them will live. <laughs> All right, then. So I think this does kind of uh, wrap things up. For this episode because uh, it's pretty obvious you can get into the weeds and uh, just look for big numbers. <laughs> it's fun to find your combos. Like, this is entertaining, at least to me. I hope it's entertaining to other people when they try to do it with their armies. Yeah, and even if you're not fishing for this kind of thing, it's still a useful tool to get more familiar on some expectations and... All of this with a huge grain of salt of statistics don't mean it always happens. It just means that these are the likelihoods. Yeah, so hopefully people learned something. Hopefully our more experienced people at least got some fun, entertaining numbers out of the deal. And I'm definitely looking forward to the combos that you send me on like, oh, look at this. So if anybody else has found some interesting combos, let us know. Yeah, as a final wrap-up thing, I highly recommend trying out Unit Crunch. Totally free. You could support Dixuit on Unit Crunch. He has a Patreon and stuff that he just started up. If you love us, we have one as well. I'm just saying. Wow. Someone has to feed the editor. <laughs> and it certainly won't be me. There's a fat joke there, but... <laughs> you should have gone for it. <laughs> that would have been pretty good. <laughs> 
But yeah, I get a lot of fun out of math. I just want to share my love of it with others. I know Eric is very much the same, which is why we both kind of unanimously decided this would be an amazing topic to start off with 10th edition. I'm sorry if math scares you, and I really hope that we helped make you feel more comfortable with the idea of it. If we didn't, I'm sorry, and I promise next week will be something that is not math-related whatsoever. No, we're going to make sure that the next time I decide to uh, bring math on, it's when you're going to least expect it. All right, but that does it for us this week. If you're on YouTube, please just drop us the YouTube pleasantries. It helps out a bunch. Otherwise, let's get out of here. Sounds good.